it over and over again. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I'm grateful. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Yeah. Lord, that's kept us, Lord Jesus, and the blood that you shed. Ooh, hallelujah. Until this day. Hallelujah. Oh, Savior, Savior. So thankful, and I give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. My pastor, Pastor Blair, and his family. Yes, Lord. The absence of my wife. Yes, Lord. Bless to all the saints that are here, to those who couldn't make it. Thank you, to Lord. To those who are on their way, I pray that they get here safely. Thank you, Jesus. And just, I won't be before you too long. I'm just, I'm just here to, to give you what does say of the Lord and be on my way. And I pray that it's encouraging to you. Thank you, Lord. And like I said, if it wasn't, I wouldn't say if it wasn't encouraging, encouraging word to me, if it didn't prick me and touch me. You said it. 
Matthew, the sixth chapter, and the 25th verse. Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Jesus. Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 25th verse. It amen. says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat, Jesus, in the body than raiment. Hmm. I'm gonna read it again so you can understand. Yes. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Stop thinking about the, mm. the frivolous things and mm. the minute things and the minor things. Jesus, Jesus. Like what you should eat or what you're going to have for breakfast or lunch. Jesus. Today and definitely for tomorrow. That's right, man. Or what you shall drink, not, nor yet for your body. Your outfits, your clothing, what you're going to, what you plan to wear for tomorrow. Yeah. What you shall put on is not the life more than meat. It's not your life more than these minute things that Jesus, we're worried about. Jesus. Is it not more than planning what you're going to wear for tomorrow? Jesus. Or planning what you're going to eat tomorrow? Jesus. Or worrying about what you have in the bank. Jesus. Enough for you to yeah. eat for tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. Behold the fowls of the air. He's saying, look at them. Look at the fowls of the air, the birds, mm -hmm. the eagles. For they sow not, neither do they reap, mm. nor gather into barns. So they're not scurrying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when we scurry right. mm -hmm. on this land, Jesus. they don't worry trust, like we trust. worry here on this land. Trust, 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 trust. They don't stress mm. like we do here in this land. They're not packing in, mm. searching the barns. Amen. It says, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Jesus. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Takes care of them, no matter what. And that hit me right there because it made it seem like in what he was saying that a fowl has more trust in God than I do. Yeah. Trust. Trust. Has more trust in God than I do. Trust Jesus. Because they know that they will be fed. They know they'll find something to eat because they trust in God. A fowl of the air. Jesus. And then he continues on saying, are you not much better than they? Are you not much better than a fowl of the air? Are you not much better than a sparrow or a pigeon, an eagle? Are you not much better than a fowl of the air? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Jesus. Why are you worrying about these things? Mm. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon, in all his glory, mm. was not arrayed like one of these. Mm -hmm. So Solomon was not like the lilies of the field. Mm. He was a complainer. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which to this Today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more clothe you, yeah. O ye of little, little faith? faith. I'm gonna read it again so you can understand. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass, so he if he covered the grass, if he had them covered, like they had nothing to worry about, which is why they grew so mm -hmm. and they never spin not or toil not. Jesus, Jesus. He covered the grass. And he's covering us. Are yes, we not yes, much more yes. than the grass? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Are we not much yes, more Lord. than the grass? And tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more clothe you? Yeah. So if he covered the fowls, he had them covered. They were going to eat. It was guaranteed. And he clothed the lilies of the field. They were covered. They're going to grow so much more because we're better than them. Jesus. He got us covered, but yet we still don't trust him. Amen. 31st verse, it says, Therefore take ye no thought, saying, What shall we eat? So he's saying, Stop saying, or stop worrying. What shall we eat? And he says,
saying, oh, what shall we drink? He's telling you to stop saying that. Or stop asking that. Or stop worrying about that. Or where with what shall we be clothed? Stop worrying about what you're going to wear. Stop worrying if you have clean clothes or dirty clothes. Or if you have to wear the same thing over and over. Amen. Amen. But after all these things, do the Gentiles see it? Mm. The Gentiles. Wow. He compared us to Gentiles. But after all these things, do the Gentiles seek? For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. So he knows that we have need yeah. of food, clothing, and shelter. Right. The same thing we repetitively thank God for every time we testify, but do it in vain. We thank God for food, clothes, and shelter, but we, do we really thank God for it? Yeah, yeah. Do we really actually ponder and think about it? Yo, he's had me covered since I was born. Mm. I've been covered since I was born. Like, I needlessly worried about these things, but if I actually stopped worrying about it, I still would be covered. Yeah. I would still eat. I would still drink. Amen. I would still be clothed yeah. during the summer, fall, and winter. Yeah. And he follows up saying, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. So he's saying, put me first. Before all these things, yeah. before all these, all, all these my new worries, put me first. But ye, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, your food, clothes, and shelter shall be added unto you. Yeah. It's by default. These things will be added unto you. So that means you have no need to worry about it. Just like the fowls are going to eat and the lilies of the field are going to grow. Take no thought in worrying about these things. Because he's got you. Got you. Yeah. So got my topic, us. Oh my, my title is Take No Thought for Tomorrow. Uh -huh. He's got you. God. He's got you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God's got you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Therefore, no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things, things of, of itself. itself. Tomorrow will. <laughs> you don't understand. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Even tomorrow's covered. Tomorrow's got its own self. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. Tomorrow's got its own self. That's right. Amen. And it says, sufficient unto the day is the evil. And what we do when we read that scripture is a very, very popular scripture and verse. Take no thought for tomorrow. Jesus wasn't telling us not to plan ahead. Mm -hmm. He wasn't telling us not to plan ahead. Proverbs, the 14th chapter, 15 verse says, The simple believeth every word, mm -hmm. but the prudent man looketh well to his going. Mm -hmm. So he's saying the prudent man actually prepares. He prepares himself. Mm -hmm. He prepares himself. He doesn't stay stagnant. He prepares himself. But he's not worrying. He didn't say anywhere in that verse that he was worrying. Yeah. Yeah. So the prudent man prepares himself. But he's telling us not to worry about the things of this life. And to become preoccupied with these things of life. Amen. And that's the thing we have a habit of doing. We we come so preoccupied with the things of this life. We come preoccupied with the things of tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow, while we're living in today, we're, we're thinking about tomorrow. Amen. And what we have to do, we have to put our full, complete trust. I think I've said this before. Put our full, complete trust in God. And yeah. Jesus. That's right. And learn to trust Him for our daily. Jesus. Yeah. So that means we gotta live day by day. Day by daily. Day. Daily. That's right, that's daily. right. But what we do, we we worry and then we plan like the prudent man. Mm. And then after we plan and get prepared, we worry on top of that. <laughs> we worry, worry about our worries. We worry, plan, and then worry. You're canceling out your plans. Jesus. You're canceling out. You being prepared and you're worrying again. So then you're gonna go in a vicious cycle of worrying and planning. Then worrying and planning again. Then worrying and planning again. And oftentimes we let the worry kind of creep in so much that it affects the current moment that we're in. And the, the current day and night that we're living in. And then it puts us in a, a funk and it puts us in a bad mood. Mm -hmm. And now you, you have to 
to look at yourself and realize, just step out of yourself real quick and look at yourself and see that you're actually worried about the next day when right. today is actually grand. Jesus. You're living and you're breathing. But take a, take a gander at yourself and look at yourself and see what you're actually worrying about. You're worrying about the next day, but life is a vapor. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Jesus. Amen. Life is a vapor. If you don't know what a vapor is, it's thin air. Right. You ever seen somebody smoke and blow smoke into the air and watch that smoke just evaporate just like that? Right, right. A vapor. That's our life. Our life is over just like that. Jesus. And yet we're sitting here worried. Jesus. About tomorrow. When our life is just this thin. Jesus. This thin. And we could be gone any moment. Yeah. Right. Amen. That's right. We could be gone any moment. It's not promised that I'll get home tonight. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And yet I try to make plans for tomorrow or what I'm gonna wear. Right. Or what I'm gonna eat or think about eating. Crazy. Amen. Amen. Crazy. Oh. Jesus, Jesus. And what we do, now I'm getting back into the natural, we we sit here in this current day, day or night, and we think about tomorrow, and we miss out on opportunities yes. mm-hmm. with family, yes. with friends. We, we put all these things before them, and here's the thing, we do this every day, and every night. So how are you going to sit here and, and bask and enjoy in those moments with your family, with your friends. How are you going to live for today when you're constantly living for tomorrow? Amen, uh, amen, amen. And it's not even promised to you, right? Not prophet. Foolish we are. Yes. Not prophet. Foolish we are. Yes. Jesus. And we never really think, and we get into a habit, and, and we get into our adult age. We never really sit down and think, I should try to get a few more moments with my family. I should try to get a few more moments with my mother, my father. Jesus, amen, amen. amen. For today, because right. there's a chance I won't see him tomorrow. Yes, Lord. Those are the most important moments. Those are the most important moments. I have children. Those are the important moments of their life. I'm their father. They need me. Amen. Amen. Like I'm the example of the perfect man to them right now. Amen. And if I'm not there, that can cause a heavy effect on their life. Amen. So take take no thought for tomorrow. Work on today. Living for today. We get too distracted by other things and by what we're planning to do tomorrow. Amen. But here's a, here's a question for yourself, but you don't have to answer it now. We constantly think how we can make tomorrow better. Mm. Mm. How, how do you how do you think you can control tomorrow? Come on. Wow. Wow. How do you think? First of all, we don't even have a good grip on today. That's right. Amen. But yet we think we can control tomorrow. But how? This is a question for you. How do we think we can control tomorrow? But what if tomorrow never comes? We have to pull out full, full trust in God. Jesus. And I will say that for forever. As long as I'm here, as long as I'm breathing. Yes. As long as I have a chance to speak to you, I'm big on faith. You know that. Amen. Amen. And I'm Big. Mm -hmm. I trust in God. We are His children. We are His people. We have to understand how much He loves us and cares for us. You have to get a good grip on that. How much He loves us and cares for us. Just the fact that He died and shed blood for us, that alone should tell you the most. But His grace and mercy after that after the wrongs that we do that we do to him on a daily. Mm-hmm. And then the wrongs that we plan for tomorrow. He cares and loves us. Once you get a good grip on how much he loves yes. and how much he cares for you. Amen. You can just watch your worries fade yes, away. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, if Lord. you really trusted him. Yes, Lord. Like the lilies of the field. You should be embarrassed if, you, if a lily has more trust and faith than God than you do. Jesus. You should be embarrassed Amen. with the vows of the air. Amen. Trust Amen. in our God, our God, more than you do. First Peter fifth chapter says, "Cast all your cares on Him." All of them. He cares. cares. He cares for you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He cares for you. Get a good grip. Get a good grip on God's love. Get a good grip on what he has done for you. Get a good grip on what he's doing for you. And get a good grip on what he's going to do for you. Yes, Trust Lord. in him with all your heart, with all yes, your mind, with all your soul. Don't let the fowls of the air outdo you. Don't let the lilies of the field outdo you. Trust in God. Take no thought. For tomorrow, he's got you. Got me. I pray that something that was said was encouraging to you. I pray that, that it caused you to think just on the love of Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. We all have a testimony. Thank you, Jesus. In this way, every single one of us, from me all the way down to Nehemiah, we all have a testimony. Yes, yes. Amen. We all have a testimony. That's right. Just the fact that we are alive. Alive, that's right. Many didn't that make we it. We are alive right now. Jesus, hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. more than anything. Thank you, Lord. more than anything we can testify to. If all of us can get up and just say, I thank God that I'm alive. Yes, Lord. Amen. That's right. Thank you. I thank God that I'm alive. Amen. It's more than enough for me. It's more than enough. It's more than enough for me to feel the love of God, to know the love of God, to trust in the love of God. It's more than enough for me. More than enough. He's done so much for us. But the beginning of everything that he's done for us is that I'm alive. I'm alive. And I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Tomorrow's not promised to today, and today wasn't promised for me, for you. It wasn't promised for any of us. Yet we're still here. We're still breathing, living in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods, or our church resides in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods. Yet we're still here, standing, standing firm at that, standing firm at that, standing boldly at that. So thankful. We each have a testimony. Yes, sir. And what it is, we have to look at the testimony and don't take it. For granted. I always say, don't do it in a vain glory when you testify. Yes. Actually, look yes. and, and dissect your testimony and think about it. Jesus. Literally sit there and think about Jesus. it. Jesus, Jesus. Think about it. Think about it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Think about everything that he's done. Write down a list if it makes if it's better for you, write it all down. Yeah. Write it all down. That's right. And it's enough to get happy. Yes, Lord. All right. Thank you, Jesus. It's enough to rejoice about. Yes, yes, yes. God is so good. And I don't so know good. about you, but I'm happy. Yeah. So good. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yes, Lord. I'm happy. Thank you, Jesus. I get to see you 30 years old. I'm happy about Thank you, Lord. Happy. Thank you. That's right. I'm happy about Jesus. that. Jesus. About that. I'm happy that I'm 30 years old and I'm a black man. Right? Yes, a lie. That's I'm right. Happy about that. Amen. I'm happy about that. I'm happy. And saved. Hey, God. hallelujah. And saved on top of yeah. that. Jesus. The Lord, the Lord saw fit to bless me. Yes. The Lord picked me. That's right. The Lord picked me. It sounds selfish, it's like I'm only talking about myself. It's your he testimony. That's right, thank the Lord. He saw fit to bless me, to pour out his spirit upon me. Hallelujah. He saw fit to break my heart. Thank you, Lord. Touch my mind. Hallelujah. He saw fit to touch me. So I'm so grateful. 
So if you're grateful, just stand up and rejoice. Hallelujah! If you're thankful, stand up and rejoice.